An eight-year-old girl presents to your office complaining of headache and defective vision. Physical examination reveals deficits in her lateral visual fields. But as you further examine the child, you also notice the growth retardation as she is small in stature for her age. These findings prompt you to suspect an endocrine origin of disorder and you order a head radiograph and MRI of the brain. Head radiograph reveal a calcified lesion in the cella tersica. So you plan for surgery to treat this condition and reassure the girl and her parents regarding the benign nature of the tumor and its origin from the remnants of embryologic precursor structure. So the case of discussion in the session is the craniopharyngioma. This craniopharyngioma is a rare type of non-cancerous benign tumor arising from the remnants of Rakti's pouch. So this craniopharyngioma can occur at any age but it occurs most often in the children as well as in the older adults. Craniopharyngiomas comprise about 5 to 10 percent of the brain tumors in the children in the United States. What is the etiology and epidemiology of this disease? It is derived from the remnants of Rakti's pouch which is the embryologic precursor of the anterior pituitary. They may also arise within the cella tersica or along the stalk of the pituitary but are always supracellular that is near the third ventricle and it occurs more commonly during the childhood and there is a bimodal age distribution with one peak in children that is between the age of 5 and 14 years and the second peak is in the adults that is between the age of 50 to 75 years. So here adamantinomatous craniopharyngiomas are more common in the pediatric age group and other types if you see the papillary craniopharyngiomas are more commonly or predominantly seen in the adults. Now what is the gross pathology of this case? Adamantinomatous type as you can see in this picture is often cystic with predominant calcification and the content resemble the motor oil mainly because the blood as well as the cholesterol crystals mix up and they form a hemorrhage to give the appearance of motor oil and second one is the papillary type what you can see over here this papillary type is often solid with no cystic component and it has non calcified mass that is how you can differentiate between the adamantinomatous as well as the papillary type. What about the histopathology of craniopharyngiomas? You can see the cords of stratified squamous or the columnar epithelium with the keratin formation. So there will be abundant keratin which gives a wet appearance in histological examination. And if you see the first type that is uh, adamantinomatous type as it is more commonly seen in the children and there is a stellate reticulum as you can see in this picture and the second one is called as the papillary type as I already mentioned that the papillary type is more commonly seen in the adults and it has especially a fibrovascular core that is the papilla with the fibrovascular core and what are the important clinical manifestations in this case hydrocephalus is approximately seen in greater than 90% of the cases mainly because of the blockade of the third ventricle mainly due to anatomical location of the tumor and because of this the patient experiences variety of visual symptoms so these can be a direct result of a pressure on the optic chiasm leading to bitemporal hemianopsia or maybe other visual disturbances. Now, what are the endocrine abnormalities we can see in the craniopharyngiomas? The frequently observed complications includes 
the deficiency of growth hormone so approximately 75 percent of the patient presents with growth hormone deficiency which leads to growth failure which can be caused by either hypothyroidism or growth hormone deficiency which is the most common presentation in the children and the second most common hormone which is deficient in this case is gonadotropin which is approximately in 40 percent of the cases associated with this other endocrine deformities like sexual dysfunction is the most common endocrine manifestation in the adults and uh, the thyroid stimulating hormone deficiency may also be seen in 25 percent of the cases along with that the adrenocorticotrophic hormone deficiency is also seen in 25 percent of the cases not only that the diabetes insipidus is frequent when especially the pituitary stalk is involved over here so other clinical manifestations or headache the headache is mainly due to obstructive hydrocephalus from the tumor which is especially compressing the third ventricle or the meningeal irritation which is by the escaped cyst contents and what are the other symptoms like common symptoms are depression nausea vomiting lethargy all these are important clinical manifestations of craniopharyngiomas so what are the tests and how the diagnosis can be done first let us talk about the imaging radiographs can detect calcified lesion in the brain that is supracellular calcification as you can see in this picture very clearly the calcification and the supracellular region is seen in approximately 80 percent of the patients with craniopharyngioma and one or more cysts are present in about 60 to 75 percent of individuals therefore a cystic calcified paracellular lesion is very likely to be craniopharyngioma you have to remember this word cystic supracellular mass or a calcified cystic supracellular mass is the word to remember for the craniopharyngioma and at last what about the treatment in this condition surgery is indicated in almost 100 percent of the cases and uh, rarely metastasis can occur but may reoccur due to incomplete excision so this is what you need to know about craniopharyngiomas